In the Red Bull motorhome, Christian Horner is seated in a peaceful area. Although he doesn't sound angry, his remarks have a certain steeliness to them. He claims he won't forget. He will never forget how some of his Formula One competitors repeatedly kicked him when he was on the ground. Nor will he forget those who supported him. He lists his wife, Jerry, as the most important of those, and he laughs when he talks about how she accompanied him in the paddock at the Bahrain Grand Prix, which opened the season, when it seemed like he was being made into the sports outcast. Horner has overcome the crisis that almost overtook him and his squad in February by using a great deal of fortitude and unwavering defiance. In the early hours of Sunday morning, amidst the blazing neon of Sin City, he has guided them to a position where their driver, Max Verstappen, might win the Global Drivers' Championship for the fourth time in a row. When Horner, the Red Bull team principal, was accused of inappropriate behavior by a female employee weeks before the season began, some of Horner's rivals saw a great chance to indulge in the brutality that lies just beneath a facade of civility. And that seemed like a very unlikely possibility. In the era of Bernie Ecclestone, Frank Williams, Ron Dennis, and Eddie Jordan, the group of Formula One owners was known as the Piranha Club. As Horner struggled to maintain his career, he encountered people like Toto Wolff, the CEO of Mercedes and a longtime rival. Wolf publicly expressed his desire for Verstappen to join Mercedes and pushed Formula One to look into Horner's case rigorously. Horner and Joss, Verstappen's father and advisor, had a falling out. Additionally, between Horner and Helmut Marko, Red Bull's sporting advisor. Although it is evident today that these connections have been repaired and re-established, Horner felt surrounded at the time. Many people rejoiced in Horner's predicament and the notion that Red Bull might finally be vulnerable because the company had been so powerful for so long and had set records for how thoroughly they ground their rivals to dust. Then, on the eve of the Bahrain race, it was revealed that the complaint against Horner had been dropped following an independent investigation conducted by an outside specialist barrister. In early August, Horner was cleared for the second time by a new independent KC after the complainant filed an appeal. Horner had struggled to maintain the team. He found it together with a combination of diplomacy and unwavering leadership for all those months. With the help of important team members who made it clear to shareholders that they would leave if Horner went. Red Bull gradually overcame the storm and battled the performance problems that plagued them during the summer until Verstappen pulled off one of the greatest comebacks in history to win the Brazilian Grand Prix earlier this month and come within a hair's breadth of winning the Drivers' Championship. Although Horner doesn't say it, it is obvious that Verstappen's fourth consecutive victory will be both a tremendous victory for the driver and the sweetest kind of catharsis for Horner. According to Horner, the events that transpired at the beginning of the year felt like a perfect storm. One important lesson in life is that you become more of a target the more successful you are. Anything that has the potential to make you, the team, and the company feel uneasy or unstable. The actions people took to try and do that saddened me more than anything. You just stay true to yourself, and I am very fortunate that I have a tremendous family, the speaker said. My wife has been amazing and kind. You always talk about your problems with your lover. She has been incredibly helpful and exceptional. The IT is beneficial to have that weight and measure since she was able to see things from an outsider's point of view. It is quite significant. When things get tough, you discover more about yourself, and I was adamant that we would make it through the challenging waters. In light of this, as well as recollections of his wife having to hide in their car beneath a blanket to avoid being photographed, Horner is pleased to acknowledge that winning the championship again would be his proudest sporting accomplishment. Yes, he replies, this paddock makes a lot of noise, and whenever I cross the blue line, you go into the garage, which is your safe haven. The car wasn't performing at the beginning of the year, so there was a lot of noise and distraction. Nevertheless, everyone stayed focused and worked hard. And by the end of the year, the car started to perform, and we worked our way through IT to IT truly inspires a team during difficult situations and when stones are being flung. This year, I believe the team displayed some F asterisk 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 you behavior. No matter what you throw at us, bring it on, our guys were saying. We are a strong team. I never thought I would have to leave. I had faith in myself. I had faith in the procedure. I just had to have faith in the method that the organization was doing with meticulousness. 
I had no idea if I would be attending the race when I boarded the jet to Bahrain. However, I had to have faith in the procedure. The company's internal staff and stockholders have given me a great deal of assistance. When I spoke to the manufacturer prior to the first race, it was actually pretty emotional. I gave the customary rundown of the tests and the goals for the season, and it was jam-packed. I shall always remember the team's assistance and the manner in which I was welcomed. Within the sport, I had a lot of support. Individuals like James Matthews from Williams, who made it a point to see me in Bahrain, were amazing. Despite several difficult situations where the vehicle has not gone as planned, the team's performance this year has been exceptional. As of right now, we are the only team with eight Grand Prix victories. We're almost ready to take home a Drivers' World Championship. Hopefully that we haven't given up on the Constructors' title, but defending it will be an enormous task. In what has undoubtedly been the most difficult year of my life and career, both emotionally and professionally, if we are able to overcome it, it is the best response to all of the doubters. Our team has never been stronger, we have some amazing partners, our shareholders have been amazing, and we are still winning and present. Every team undergoes constant change. So while we will be sad to see the pair departing, it is necessary for us to keep growing as a group and as a company. Horner's relationship with Wolf, which has been tense and marked by mistrust for a while, also reached a new low point as a result of the crisis that engulfed him. When Wolf accused Horner of disrespecting his wife, Susie, this week, it fell even farther. Following an anonymous claim that her role as head of the F1 Academy the all-female series owned and operated by the sports owners, Liberty Media, could be interpreted as a conflict of interest due to information she could share with her husband. Susie Wolf was the focus of a brief and extremely contentious investigation late last year. Ironically, Red Bull has committed to three entries, whereas the majority of teams on the grid only have one. Although the accusation was quickly dropped, Wolf decided to give the matter fresh life this week by implying that Horner was the only team principal who took his time objecting to the slight on his wife's reputation. It rekindled Horner and Wolf's long smoldering rivalry. At the conclusion of last year, Toto texted me to express gratitude for defending Susie today and letting them know that the teams are together and that there is a red line. No problem. I said what I believe. I replied that I don't know why he feels the need to go and utter all that s asterisk 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 this week. His remarks, in which he thanked me for his support, caught me off guard. I haven't spoken a thing. I haven't fallen for Zach's ruse. I haven't fallen for Toto's trick. He has been pursuing our drivers. They have pursued our sponsors, I've noticed. I simply thought, leave them to do it, instead of worrying about me. I believe Toto has more than enough personal problems to be preoccupied with the success of his own squad. Mercedes has had a terrible run since 2021. According to their own standards, they have had three very uncompetitive years. Lewis has made the decision to quit the team. It would be intriguing and fantastic for Formula One to watch him achieve it. It's possible that he doesn't believe in the future that was offered to him and likely needs the renewed motivation that the challenge at Ferrari will provide. However, I never try to find joy in the suffering of others. This is a cyclical sport. With the exception of one year, in 2015, we continue to outperform our competitors and win races even after we stopped having a competitive engine after 2013. The less you speak, the more you concentrate on resolving your personal problems, which is typically a preferable approach when you are not leading a team that I have been in the sport for a long time. And the thing that saddened me the most about the problems that arose at the beginning of the season was how some of the opposing teams tried to exploit me. Toto chased after me once I was down. Others did too. For their own benefit, they tried everything. I understand that it's a competitive industry. A month prior, Toto had lost his driver to Ferrari, and he was telling everyone that this was not the case. It appeared that he was the last to learn about it. People make use of whatever available tools. I guess it was anticipated by the individuals concerned. Horner also acknowledges the role Verstappen played in keeping the squad cohesive and concentrated on winning a fourth straight championship despite a fierce threat from McLaren's Lando Norris, which was ultimately put out by Verstappen's performance at Interlagos. According to Horner, Max has shown this year his mental strength and aptitude. He has raced brilliantly, delivered at crucial times and remain composed when things haven't gone his way. This year, 
He has driven like a four-time world champion. He deserves to win this world championship more than any other driver on the grid. We have been struggling throughout the summer, so he has put in more work than he has in any other year. He and the engineers have put forth a lot of effort that he has also drawn inspiration from the cockpit. You can feel the intensity when you watch the type of race he drove in Brazil and the drive he gave the squad on Monday morning in Milton Keynes. He has been nothing but professional, helpful, and a pleasure to work with throughout the year, and I appreciate that. Will we be stronger next season as a result of all that transpired this season? 100%. You become stronger when you don't break. We will undoubtedly come out of 2024 as a stronger team, more focused and determined than before. Furthermore, I find the future to be interesting. By 2026, we will be manufacturing our own engine, which is a huge undertaking. We will prosper because of the exceptional dedication and enthusiasm in the company. Max will be present. He has faith in others around him. He has faith in others around him. He's winning. He is doing well. And we must continue to provide a vehicle that is commensurate with his abilities, which I am sure we can accomplish. Look, this year, I've just kept my head down and worked hard. If we take home the trophy at the end of the year, we will have performed under extreme pressure and scrutiny. Let them throw their stones and do your job. However, I will always be proud of what we have accomplished as a team, despite all the obstacles.